Hello, and welcome back to Aubrey Books and Coffee. Please grab your favorite beverage of choice and join me since we are now at the end of March. That's right. We got to the end, you guys, which means sadly Realmathon is over, but I had such a good time. I hope you all did too. I loved being on Team Creation. It was absolutely fantastic. I loved our group and our chats, and I just can't thank Cassidy enough for doing this. It was such a blast. Now, because of that and wanting to do points for my team, I, of course, ended up reading 30 books. Can you believe that? I am exhausted. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's game and hopefully being a little bit fewer than that so I can kind of recoup a little bit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on reviewing those books. I started off by finishing A Tempest of Tea. This I gave three stars. I was so excited about it coming out. I know that I told you all to go check it out. And I'm not mad at it, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be kind of thrillery and heist and, you know, kind of tongue in cheek and, you know, just kind of maybe a mystery in there as well. And it did have some of that, but <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. I will live. Okay, <laughs> so it did have some of that. But, uh, and it had to eat like a found family feel, which was also a lot of fun. And it, I don't know, I, this is the same author that did We Hunt the Flame. And I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I think maybe because it had the similar kind of voice to it, maybe I'm just not vibing with the writing style as much as I had hoped I would. It's worth checking out. I'm just probably not even going to continue this series. There was just something in it that... I'd be in the middle of the story and really excited. And then by the end of a few chapters, I don't care anymore. I know that sounds horrible because again, it clicked all these boxes for me. It just wasn't my story. So worth checking out for you guys. If you really loved We Hunt the Flame, I think you will enjoy this. I think I may have to say this just isn't the author for me. Then I finished Bring Me Your Midnight. I gave this a four star and I was so close to doing a five star but there were a couple of issues that I had with the story that ended up taking it away that being said Kim from Whimsical Narratives is the one that put this on my radar I highly recommend it it's still four star amazing it's got the witchy vibes it's got a a forbidden love kind of going on and a bit of a love triangle and it's got magic and it's got lies being told and it was just a really really good story all set on an island and you've got things going on with the water there you've got things going on with the environment there and it was just it was so good and a friendship that ends up getting taken to the test and I did. I really enjoyed the story. There were just a couple of things I wish would have been fleshed out a little bit more that left me kind of going, then why'd you bring it up? If you weren't going to wrap it up, why'd you bring it up? So there's some questions I still have that I really wanted answered that didn't get answered or were just barely touched on. And that's why it's a four star instead of a five star. But it was still a lot of fun. And I highly recommend you guys go check this one out. Then I finished Zero Days. This I gave four stars as well. This is a thriller. I chose it because I needed to get the Z for my reading challenge and there's not a lot of Z books out there. I had a great time with this. It was very interesting that it had kind of a, um, if you've ever watched those TV episodes where they show you something happening action-y and then they say 48 hours before. <laughs> Normally, I'm not a huge fan of those kind, but in this instance, it worked for me. I really enjoyed it. And it's a husband and wife team. And basically, the whole premise is this husband and wife team will break into a place to test their security and then let them know. So they're actually hired by the CEOs of the company to do this. And of course, they run into the law a lot because not everybody believes, oh, sure, they hired you to break in. And so they're always having to prove it and stuff with contracts and all of that. Well, unfortunately, in the middle of a mission, one of the husband and wife team gets murdered and the other one framed for that murder. And so you spend the entire book 
trying to find out what happened, why did that person die, and the police are after the other one, so having to dodge the police and everything and trying to tell the police, no, you need to be looking over here. I will say the reason it's a four star for me is because the ending, I was just like, I saw it coming. I hoped I was wrong and it was a red herring. And then when it was obvious that it wasn't wrong, I wish it would have been done a little bit less cheesy. It just felt very cheesy to me. Like, again, you're watching a week, you know, an, an episode a week kind of ending. And I just wanted more. I don't know why, but all these books, I just want more. <laughs> so that's why I gave it the four star. But it was worth watching and reading and being there. So I recommend it. Next, I finished The Getaway List. Now, this was a Once Upon a Book Club book, so for the full review, you'll have to go and watch that vlog. I'm sorry, but you'll have to. I'll make sure to link it below for you. Um, but it is a cute rom-com. I did give it three stars, and I did have a good time with it. And the whole premise of the story is kids growing up and having to kind of grow away from their parents and kind of break out on their own. And there's also a bit of a friend-to-romance kind of situation. So definitely worth checking out. I highly recommend it. Recommend. Then I finished The Luminous Dead. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's just wanting to go today. Of course, because I'm filming. Um, unfortunately, I gave The Luminous Dead two stars. I know. And it sounded like such a cool premise. In the first 150 pages, we are introduced to the main character who has a voice in her ear as she has to don this suit to go exploring to kind of protect her from the elements. And there's something in the dark that's kind of hunting her. Or is it psychological? Hmm. I wonder. And then it gets to the point where this voice who's been instructing her the whole time, you start to wonder, can she really trust the voice or is there a hidden agenda there? And again, that's all within the first 150 pages. And then it's repeated the entire rest of the over 300 pages in the book. Same thing. Every chapter, same thing. Same question. Am I being hunted? Is it in my head? Can I trust the voice? I need the voice. Who's the voice? What's the agenda? Something's hunting me or is it in my head? Again and again again and I was so over it <laughs> so that's why I got a two star I was so tempted to DNF and honestly if it hadn't been for a readathon and I wanted the full points for reading this book probably would have so yeah it's not one I'm gonna recommend it's it's got a following so you'll have to check it out for yourself to see if it's up your alley or not then I finished Flamefall. This is book two in the Aurelian cycle. It picks up right after book one. It was fantastic. I loved it. I gave it four stars. Mwah. It is beautifully written. You have more with the romance, more with the friendships, more with the politics. And it's just really setting it up beautifully for book three. I cannot wait to finish this trilogy. Then I finished Heartless Hunter, which is also known as the Crimson Moth. So I had editions sent to me in book boxes with both titles on it. I gave this five stars. I loved it. It was such a fun ride, everyone. I cannot, cannot highly recommend this book enough. And spoiler for the month of March, this book won. So against all the other books I'm about to review for you, this book won my overall pick for my favorite for March. So I am just, oh my gosh, over the moon about this. You have friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, love triangle. It was a, it had the same vibes as the Scarlet Pimpernel, in case you've ever watched that or read that. Um, and in fact, the author said in her letter inside one of the editions that she was heavily inspired and always loved the Scarlet Pimpernel. So you definitely feel it. You can completely feel it in how these characters interact and especially the main character pretending to be just this, you know, uh, girl, this lady and of court and very frivolous needs and desires, but is secretly the Crimson Moth. So you've got all of those good things going on. Plus you have magic and witches and a war going on and politics. I mean, it is just so much fun. Fantasy all over the place in here. And it is so, so good. And friendships that are tried and true. I just... I cannot. I, I even had tears in my eyes at the end, so prepare yourselves for that. But it is so good, and I need the next book, like, right now. <laughs> 
Then I finished The Queen of Nothing. This I gave four stars. I am so happy how they wrapped up Jude's story in this Folk of the Air series. Oh, it has been so good. I have loved it. Jude really came into her own and I, her and her sister's relationship and everything. I just... Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Before I continue in the Elfham, Elfham world, um, I hear there's a 3.5. So I need to go and read that first and then pick up the new duology that came out. And I am just so excited, you guys. I, I love that I'm now picking up what all the love for this series has been about. So if you haven't read The Cruel Prince, get going because it is a fabulous ride. Then I attempted to finish Sanctuary of the Shadow. Yeah, this was my first DNF of the month. I hated to do it. Again, trying to get all the points for Realmathon especially. But oh my gosh, you guys, what a slog. Um, it First of all, it talked about it being in a circus. Who wouldn't love that, right? It's not in the circus. It's in the circus for like three chapters. And then you never have the circus again. And then these reluctant allies to lovers kind of situation was very awkward. It felt very forced. It didn't feel natural at all. And any kind of spice scene they were trying to do, again, felt very awkward and very uncomfortable. And again, very forced. And it just, oh, it was oogie. It was absolutely oogie and not good at all. The plot progression itself was very choppy. It didn't make sense. There were times that I'm having to flip back to previous chapters, like, did I just miss something? But no. And then unfortunately, I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to DNF this. And so I went into Goodreads to remove it from my book list. And while on Goodreads, it has a less than three star rating. So it's not just me. And if you read the one star reviews, you'll see in there, a lot, a lot of people to DNF this book. It just did not give what we had hoped it would, especially for being traditionally published. You would have expected editors to have caught a lot of the inaccuracies and the craziness that it was. So unfortunately, it was a DNF. Then I finished Shift. And this one I gave a three star. I really enjoy Hugh Howey's writing style. However, this one fell into the curse of the second book for me. I am super excited to pick up the third one at some point, and I will be finishing this series. But this one was just way longer than it needed to be for me. Plus, it got really confusing at times. You start off in this book, instead of picking up where book one left off, you actually pick up in an entirely new silo with entirely new cast of characters. And then you're jumping around time gaps, like a 61-year time gap. So you will have present day where silo one left off bouncing back 61 years ago for how it all kind of began, which is great. But again, with characters I could care less about because I didn't even know they existed. And then finally, towards the latter half of the book, you finally get the characters that you saw from the first book. So it kind of redeemed itself a little bit, but it just dragged on in places. And just I just wasn't a huge fan of the jumping back and forth, especially like I said, with characters I didn't know before. So for me, it was kind of a letdown, but not so much that I'm not going to finish the series. I will be reading, like I said, the third one at some point. Then I finished Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. This is Matthew Perry's memoir. I gave this five stars. It was very heavy, very heartbreaking, um, but it was also warm and compassionate. He did have humor in there, of course, um, and he was very transparent about himself, his own um, insecurities that he has and has always had. And especially since we lost Matthew Perry recently, I'm glad that I finally got to read this one and I highly recommend it. I'm keeping it on my shelf. I will potentially pick it up and read it again at some point after I emotionally recover from it. So just beware of trigger warnings in these in this book, but it was just so good. And it does give you a sense of hope at the end. And I think it's worth reading. Then I finished A Curse So Dark and Lonely. This one I gave four stars. This was my book club pick. You all picked very well. Loved it. And spoiler for tomorrow's video, actually, the book club did pick the second book in this series for our book club pick for April. So we will be continuing the series. We really enjoyed it. It had very much Beauty and the Beast kind of vibes to it. That was done on purpose. And you could see the nod to it in almost the entire book. It also, though, added in a love triangle. It added in a enemies to lovers kind of thing. And it had family. And best of all for me... I love that the main character in this book has cerebral palsy. I love whenever there's representation there. Cerebral palsy. I never know how to pronounce things. I apologize if I butcher things. Know that it's with a good and loving heart. Um, 
But I love that kind of representation. And it's brought up often. And it's not as a disability at all. It is very much a what are you looking at? <laughs> like, get over it. All right. I am strong. And I just I love that attitude with it, too. And it was just such a good and fun story. And we're all dying to see what's going to happen in book two. Then I finished Star Wars Light of the Jedi. This I gave three stars. There was a lot of humor in it, which was a lot of fun. Um, had good writing style. There was intense moments of we have to save the planet. And we even got to see some Jedi using some incredible powers and abilities. The reason it got a three star is that was all in the first half. The second half, oh, it went downhill for me. It got really dry in places and really kind of dragged on. I'm not mad at it, but I was so excited in the first half that but I was let down. So it went from a four star down to a three star, but I still recommend it. It was still a solid Star Wars book if that's what you're looking for. Then I finished What the River Knows. This I also gave a three star. Um, I love, first of all, all of the background information we get on Egypt and Cleopatra. I love that the chapters were in Spanish and that there were so many Spanish phrases in it. I absolutely adored that. Um, I, I enjoyed seeing the interaction of the main character with a reluctant ally, but there was a plot twist that was kind of a letdown for me. And the ending that they tried to do to lead into the next book for me was kind of boring and not great for me. So I'm actually not continuing this series. This is it for me. I'm finishing with this one. Um, but I I think I would recommend it as long as you're okay with it being very slow. Um, there not being a whole lot that really happens in the book. You have like the beginning and then the end and we're wrapping it up quickly so we can go to the next book kind of a thing. Then this might be the book for you. Um, there were moments that were cute, but overall, yeah, it was just kind of a letdown for me, especially for being a gorgeous edition. But hey, it gets to go to you guys in the drawing, so win-win for that. Then I finished Crescent City, House of Flame and Shadow. This I gave five stars. Oh my God! This is the third in the Crescent City series. I really enjoyed it. I thought a lot of things were wrapped up very, very well. And in fact, the ending makes me think maybe we're going to get another book in the Akatar series. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Then I finished Shanghai Immortal. I am so glad I finally got to this one. I gave it a three star. It was a solid and enjoyable read. And I am going to be continuing the series. It got a three star only because there were times that I got pulled out of the story when things were ha certain things were happening and character interactions for me felt different than how the characters were presented in the beginning. Just to me, to me, it didn't completely feel seamless, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so because of that, it was a three instead of a four star. But I did have a fabulous time with this. I do recommend it to you all. And like I said, I'll be continuing the series. It has a sassy main character. It has a mortal who is with her and slowing her down all the time. And he's like overly polite and rule following. And it is absolutely hysterical. The banter, the way she bucks the rules, and again, the verbiage of what she says to him that just makes him blush, and <laughs> it's just so cute and so fabulous. So again, I had a good time. Then I ended up reading Empire of the Damned. This is the sequel to Empire of the Vampire. Jay Kristoff did not let us down. It was so good, everybody. Oh my gosh. Five stars. Deserves the five stars on my shelf. Got a beautiful edition this time absolutely loved it. We see all the same characters that are still alive <laughs> in this one. And um, we'll just say it ended on a cliffhanger that makes it be like, Kristoff, book three needs to be here right now. Like right now. Like how dare you do this and not have book three ready for us. But it was just so good. It still gives me interview with the vampire feels while I'm reading it. It has great interactions between Gideon and we'll just say another character and just, oh my gosh, just all the things. Then I finished Fool's Quest. Oh, of course I gave it a five star. I love my fits and I love the fool and I love, love, love this series so much. And I'm not 
ready to finish it. I'm not ready to be done with the Robin Hobb world. Oh, but this one did not disappoint. It was really good. Um, there were times it kind of dragged on in places for me, but it redeemed itself very quickly. So highly recommend it. Um, there was a rescue mission and there was, of course, a merging now into the Rain Water Chronicles series, the one that had uh, the Ship of Magic. Remember, I didn't care much for that series, but now I see why we needed it because now we're bringing in those characters and it is important that all that happened. So even if you're like me and you didn't care much for it, it is important to have that background information for this book in particular. So that was really kind of cool to see. And of course, all the character interactions and things that happen. So I'm excited and also sad to be continuing this one. Then I finished Renegades. Oh, I gave this one three stars. Um, it felt to me like the comic in, uh, Invincible meets the Pixar movie, The Incredibles, which sounds really cute, except that it dragged on and on and it was just way too long and it got very it was very angsty like more than I even normally like in my YA so it really got to the point where I was just like I don't care there was this revenge plot going on and I'm like I really don't care if she gets revenge or not <laughs> like I just don't care and I didn't care about any of the characters at the end and so I will not be continuing this series and it's not one I would necessarily recommend unless you're a hundred percent looking for something like that and then I finished The Tainted Cup. This I gave three stars. This is the one that was like fantasy world meets Sherlock Holmes. You have Anna, who is the Sherlock Holmes, and you've got Din, who is the Watson character. And then you've got magic thrown in there. And there's a really cool premise for the magic where Din basically is an engraver, which means he can smell a smell, and that will help trigger him to memorize and have like a eidetic memory of exactly what everybody's saying, exactly where everything's at, you know, like taking a picture kind of thing. It's really kind of a cool way it's broken down and Anna's very quirky just like every Sherlock's home character kind of seems to be quirky and I really love their interaction and their relationship and I like a good mystery I loved you know them going through and trying to puzzle out the clues and things like that and the author did a good job of hiding it so you couldn't really figure out who it was at the end I had several guesses I was trying to make sure I had enough guess that I would actually be right so yay I was right well, there's a first reveal that I was like, eh, okay, fine, whatever. But the second reveal, I was like, yes. And so that really redeemed it for me. But I actually will not be continuing the series. Um, alongside this mystery and murder plot and all of that, you also have what felt to me like Pacific Rim Kaiju um, trying to come in on the city and they have to protect the city from that. And it was just a little bit too much for me. I didn't like all split focus of several different ways. I think if they had just gone with one or the other, I might have continued the series, but... They kind of lost me throwing in way too much. Then I finished reading The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Now this one was a buddy read with you guys. I so enjoyed doing that. Thank you. I always enjoy reading more whenever I'm reading them with somebody. And this one was really interesting. I ended up giving it a four star. It was very quirky and whimsical in places. It was like a boy's coming of age story meets fantasy, you know, kind of a witchy vibe to it. And there were times where it was just very nonsensical and you just kind of had to go for the ride and just ignore anything that felt like common sense or reality and just go for it. And it was very enjoyable. Um, a little sad towards the end. There are some trigger warnings in here, so be aware of that when you're reading it. Um, it's a real short read, less than 200 pages. And like I said, it was just a lot, a lot of fun. Then I finished From Below. This one I gave three stars. You have people that are trying to see what happened to a ship that went down a long time ago. And while they're in this wreckage, they get trapped. They're running out of air. It seems like maybe the dead people aren't staying dead. So it, it's got a lot of interesting and scary themes in there. I don't know if it's because for me, being underwater isn't as scary as a haunted house, and maybe that's why, but I compared it to the one I had read last year for Halloween of Darcy Coates, and that one I just liked a lot better, so that's why this got a three-star, but it was still well-written as Darcy Coates does, and I do recommend it. 
Then I finished Murder at Spindle Manor. This one I gave three stars. It's actually a lower three star. I don't do half stars and stuff, but a lower three star for me than the Darcy Coates for sure. Um, this one actually is one of the Spiff Bow contestants. And so I kind of was excited about it and hopeful for it. It is a mystery meets fantasy where basically you have somebody that's tracking a shapeshifter that can turn into human or monster depending. And basically she tracks it to this one particular building, of course, in a rainstorm and all the things, right? And she's trying to figure out who it is. Um, for me, it was just, it was written very strangely. And maybe that was part of it that took me away from it. But mostly, I think it was the ending. The ending really left me going, I want my time back. <laughs> so that's why I think it got a three, almost a two star, but I'm always trying to promote indie authors. So for me, I think if it hadn't been indie, if it had been traditionally published, probably would have been rated a little bit lower. Then I attempted to read one of ours. I did DNF this. This is the one that was required um, for me to read because of the Trivial Pursuit game and my TBR game. I am really not doing well with these, you guys. Not only do I not know the answers when it comes up, but so far the Dean Koontz book is the only book I've liked since doing this game. I may have to think about revamping that at some point if I can't get that stat up a little bit better. I'm just not a huge historical fiction fan. And so for me, this just fell flat. It felt kind of boring. And so I had to stop. And now if you love historical fiction, the writing isn't bad. Pick this up. It's got awards aplenty. I'm sure it's a fabulous read. It just definitely wasn't for me. Then I attempted to read Falling Kingdoms. This one I also DNF'd, but for an entirely different reason. I loved the writing style. I loved that it was giving us a new fantasy, a new world. I enjoyed the characters I was meeting. I was really getting into this, you guys. And then we meet a royal character who can't stop talking about how he's in love with his sister and has inappropriate thoughts about his sister. And for me, that was Oogie and I'm out. <laughs> so um, other people have obviously been able to look past it. I want to say it was like a four star average rating on Goodreads. Good for you. Not every book's for everybody. I draw the line at incest. It's my thing. So nope, not not doing it, not reading about it, especially when you can't stop thinking and talking about it on the page. So I'm sorry, everybody, I DNF'd and I will not continue the series. <laughs> then I read Age of Swords. This one I gave a four star. I loved it. This is the Patreon group with um, Cassidy. And oh my gosh, I loved it more than the first one. Um, but I will warn you, it's got heartbreak. It's got loss. It's got death. It's got... I cried. I'm not going to lie. I cried. And I was on their Discord just chatting about it. I'm like, this is horrible. I hate this book. But it has so much character development and growth. And you're just really getting into the politics and the world building is just getting more and more beautiful. And oh my gosh, it's just so, so good. I can't wait to pick up the third book for next month. So spoiler on that again. Um, but we go into the next one, which I believe is Age of War. And I'm excited to pick that one up because, yeah, it just, it is so good. I highly recommend this series to you if you like any kind of large fantasy. Then I finished Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This one I gave three star. It would be a very high three star if I did points. Now, I will warn you, because I didn't know what to expect going into this. I heard it was kind of whimsical and magical. Um, it's boring for the first 30%, at least to me. It read very much like a private journal entry that Emily was doing mixed with a manual. So it felt very dry. And then the footnotes that she had, unlike Jay Kristoff, who does footnotes in his Nevernight series, and they're absolutely hysterical. These were again, like a manual. So it was very dry. I didn't think it added to it at all for my enjoyment. And in fact, I was contemplating DNFing it. But I'm so glad I stuck it out. And that's why I wanted to make sure to tell you that's just the first 30%. Then you have a friendship of Emily and Wendell. That is just, oh, it is so precious. It is so precious. I love it. And then Emily gets herself in trouble. She wakes a fairy king. And of course, he's all like, you're going to marry me now. And it's like, what? And then it just goes from there. And it is just so much fun to watch it unfold and to see what's happening. So once she left behind the manual part of the book, I really enjoyed it as a fantasy. And it was so cute. And I am 100% going to pick up the one that came out this year to continue this series. Loved it. Then I finished The Will of the Many. 
This I gave five stars. Oh my goodness, you guys. It had gotten a lot of hype on the fantasy booktuber world, and so I was kind of scared. I absolutely love the Lycanus trilogy. You see it there. And so I've liked James Islington in the past. However, I've heard from people who hated the Lycanus trilogy that they actually really like the Will of the Many. So you never know if he changed his writing style, if you're going to actually like it. So I went into it kind of cautious, but excited. And we started off with a bang with a main character who gets into a lot of fights and who seems kind of like your morally gray character. Then he gets into a school and he's trying to get in the ranks of the school. And I love a good school setting. I enjoy seeing classes taken. I enjoy seeing people advancing. I enjoy seeing the politics and the friendships that are made. And you get all of that. And so it's giving me some really great four star vibes, especially when there's a small romance going on. And I just was really loving it because, by the way, he's a secret spy. That's not a spoiler. It's on the back of the book. But it just, oh, so many good things. And then the ending. What just happened? And that's why it's a five star. That right there blew me away. And I cannot wait for the next one to come out. But I think we unfortunately have to wait until next year. <laughs> but it is so good, you guys. So I highly recommend it. Again, it is a high fantasy. So prepare yourself for a whole lot of world building and getting to know a magic system. But I think it's completely worth the ride. Good job, James Islington. <laughs> then I finished Covet. Now this one's the third one in the series and you get exactly what you got in the first two. You've got, you know, the kind of YA romance and fantasy, vampires, werewolves, dragons, gargoyles, a whole nine yards. And it is so good. I love that we get the same friends going on. I love seeing the politics that are happening in this world. I love the crazy triangle that's going on between Grace and Jackson and Hudson. So it's all the good things and the ending again blew my mind and so I cannot wait to see what the fourth one's going to bring. <laughs> The only net galley I actually finished this month was The Witchfinder's Serpent. This one was interesting. In the beginning, it gave me vibes of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where there's a war going on, and you have these two brothers getting adopted by somebody, and they're exploring the house, and there's a part of the house they're not supposed to go into, but of course, what are boys going to do? And kind of getting into themselves into some trouble. Um, but it was really interesting. Um, I love the writing style. Um, I love the family dynamic. And and there's some friendships that get made along the way, which is good. You also get witch vibes in here. Um, and of course, a witch finder or hunter who's after them. Um, and some family history they didn't know existed. And it just, yeah, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Very heartfelt in moments. But there were some moments that kind of dragged on a little bit. So this is kind of, I think, supposed to be YA. And it feels that way. So just prepare yourself for that. But I would recommend picking it up. And last but certainly not least, we have the Oregon Trail that I am walking very slowly, apparently. Um, so needless to say, I ended with still needing 1,816 miles to go. So yes, I must draw a calamity card. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. All right. Be nice, be nice, be nice. What does that say? Did I get cholera again? Oh, add a book to my TBR next month. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here in my misery. Please like, subscribe, send your friends, and I will see you all next time.